For many, Alexei Navalny was the last great hope for a democratic Russia. A charismatic anti-corruption campaigner and opposition politician who took on Vladimir Putin at great risk to his own safety. On Friday, it was announced he died at this Arctic penal colony where he was serving over 30 years for a series of charges, including extremism. Russian authorities say he died from sudden death syndrome. But three of the people who best know how Putin operates have told 7.30 they believe that Navalny was murdered. I was horrified, of course, but unfortunately not surprised because political assassinations is something Vladimir Putin has been doing for years. The message from the Kremlin is don't mess with the Tsar because if you mess with the Tsar, you may die. Putin's got an election coming up in the middle of March. He's scared to death that people aren't going to come out and support him. So what better way to make sure that he has no opposition than to kill the most important opposition politician in Russia, Alexei Navalny. Within hours of the announcement of his death, Navalny's wife Yulia spoke at the Munich Security Conference. No, if Putin все его окружение, Путина, путинские друзья, его правительство знали. If anyone can understand what Navalny's family might be going through, it's Yevgenia Karamurza, whose husband, the opposition politician Vladimir Karamurza, has survived two poisoning attempts. My heart goes out to Alexei's family, and I can, I can imagine what they're living through right now, because I've been on the brink of that um, at least twice. Last year, Vladimir Karamurza was sentenced to 25 years in jail for speaking out against Putin's war in Ukraine. And there are now grave fears about his safety as well. I have been fearing for my husband's life uh, every single day since at least his first poisoning in 2015. Any moment, of any day of my life, the phone call might come. John Sweeney is the author of Killer in the Kremlin, a book that documents what happens to Putin's critics. Let's run through a few of them. Um, Anna Politivskaya, Natasha Esmerova, Boris Nemtsov, Alexei Navalny. In order, poison then shot, 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 poisoned, now dead. He says in recent years, Navalny was seen as Putin's greatest threat. He was everything um, Putin wasn't. Physically brave, amusing, funny, charismatic, all of those things. And Putin hated him. The reason um, Alexei Navalny had to be eliminated like that is because he, of course, represented a very strong alternative to Vladimir Putin and refused to back down, refused to be silenced. Navalny first rose to prominence in 2011, protesting against electoral fraud and corruption and what he called Putin's party of crooks and thieves. Alexei Navalny started exposing the corruption he started fighting the corruption. He created uh, YouTube videos about corrupt officials. And that platform grew and grew and grew. And he has millions of Russians, particularly young Russians, who say enough of this horrible um, stealing that's going on. Um, we want someone fresh and, and young who will stop it. And that's what Alexei Navalny was all about. He was barred from running for president, but continued to get under Putin's skin. After speaking out against constitutional changes that could have seen Putin remain in power for another 16 years, he was poisoned in Siberia in 2020. He collapsed while on a plane to Moscow, but survived after being evacuated to Berlin. Konstantin. A few months later, Navalny tracked down one of the security service agents involved in the operation to assassinate him. And Navalny plays some Kremlin high up. So, hello, uh, tell me what happens. How did you do it? And the hapless poisoner 
spills the beans and says we put the Novichok on the seam of Navalny's underpants. The following month, Navalny decided to return to Russia. At that moment, the Putin regime said, if you come back to Russia, we will arrest you, hoping that he will never come back to Russia. But instead, he got on that airplane, flew to Moscow, and was arrested when he landed. A series of trials before Kremlin-controlled courts saw him facing decades in prison, and what ultimately became a death sentence. And it shows what kind of man Alexei Navalny is. He, he cared more about the, the future of his country than his own personal security and his own safety. And he was ready to take a risk with his life and his liberty for his country. Across the world, tributes have been paid to a brave opposition leader who wanted a better future for his country. Make no mistake, Putin is responsible for Navalny's death. In Russia, hundreds of those commemorating Navalny's death have been arrested. And in this climate, Yevgenia Karamurza is worried that her husband and other political prisoners may not survive. Now that the regime has killed its most prominent opponent, I believe that they will not stop before killing other people in Russian prisons. Next month, Russia will hold what they're calling a presidential election. But with Putin's main opponents in jail, dead or barred from running, it's more like a coronation. How many more people does Vladimir Putin have to kill before you get it? He is an enemy of everything we believe in, a democracy, fair play, free speech, common decency, having a laugh at people in power. Come on, this man is not our friend. We've got to stand up to him.